dear Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for all the saints who, who are gathered here, forming this mighty cloud of witnesses to delve into your word and refresh our hearts and our minds and our souls. We ask that you would please um, help us to remember, help us to make connections between what we read and what you require of us. In Jesus' name, we give you honor and glory in all things. Amen. 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 So, what we learned in, in part of the introduction to uh, Love Carved in Stone is that the command, the, the, the ten words, as the author talks about them, rather than commandments, since the word commandment isn't actually in the Hebrew text. Um, mm -hmm. The it's really kind of three sections to to the ten words. The first three words talk about our relationship with God, how how the people were supposed to relate to God, how we relate to God. Um, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, I hope I'm not. <laughs> and words five through ten are basically sort of guidelines, instructions on, on how to how to run a successful God-fearing community. So they may, they, five through 10 talk more about how people relate to each other than, and, and how, how they relate to each other in a godly way. Uh, word four is kind of a little bit of both. Um, and that's uh, the fourth word uh, we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit, but that that's one that probably, if, if there's any any commandment that get that gets ignored by churchgoers on a, as on a regular basis, it's word four, um, and there's there's reasons for that. But, uh, anyway, uh, so the ten the ten words. The author talk, talks about them as 10 words of love. They were given to people, you have to remember where the people of Israel were when they got these commandments. The, the, the people of Israel were had come out of slavery. They were in the wilderness and they'd been kind of stuck there because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. And ultimately though, they're looking to be given a country of their own. Mm -hmm. um, they were, but at the time when they when they got these words, there are still people who are wandering in the wilderness. They were still in their slave mentality, and in, in a sense, and a lot of times you read about them really wanting to go back to that slave situation. Mm -hmm. um, and what? What, the, what these 10 words were hoping to do was to help them transition from that slave mentality to a uh, chosen mentality, God-chosen mentality. I would say. Um, uh, is to, help them, to help them live their best lives with God is another way of putting it. Uh, yeah. mm. They weren't described as commandments, and calling them words doesn't mean they're just suggestions. They are an outline for how we live with God and in community as a God-fearing people. So we got through seven words. Um, six. We got through seven words, six, six lessons. Mm -hmm. Uh, before COVID sort of rudely interrupted us. So I'm going to, I want to uh, uh, sort of review. And it, all of us, I think, we've been to church enough that we all know kind of what King James says the Ten Commandments were. Yeah. Um, uh, word one is. You shall have no other gods before me. 
yeah. in Ward 2 uh, is that you shall not make, your, make for yourself any image above or on, on earth or below earth. Whatever. I didn't say that right. But no, no image, no, don't create any image that you're going to put up as a God. And it says you will be punished your third and fourth generation if you do that. And so what what in, in those two words um, and then the third word we talk about in a little bit then those two words it describes what God expects of us when we in, in for our part in our relationship with God And Matthew, um, Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven sort of sums that up in the New Testament. And to me, I mean, what it, what it says is, love the Lord, your, the Lord your God, with all your heart and with all your mind. And that's yeah. a really simple mm -hmm. way of saying what that commandment requires us to do, what that word expects us to do. Uh, we go on to word three. We went on to word three. That is the kind of it's too warm here. They can go inside. Uh, the, the first two words are kind of self-explanatory, and, and there really wasn't a, a lot of challenge to those, I don't think. But word three uh, is a little different, and I have to ask: Do we have any? Do we have any kids watching us? No, not not here. Carolyn, no. got rid of yours. No, I don't have any. Uh, okay. Malia just went home. I'm going to try it. And you know what King James says. You know how King James uh, talks about word three, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, hold it for me. What's the third command? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, right? Yeah, right. Let me try something here. It's something we did before. We can play a little bit of it just to remind us. And this video kind of reminds me that. Trouble with it. This, this is why I, this is why we're experimenting. Okay. Uh, down here, I don't know if it'll share. Share. Okay, I'm going to play this video and let me know if you can see and hear it as it's supposed to. Okay. Shit, they got Patrick, Dad. You're not watching? Oh, right. I heard that. Here's, here's why I didn't get an attitude. I'm going to tell you why I didn't get an attitude. Okay. I didn't get an attitude because I remember my first time cussing. My first time cussing was because my mom smacked mm -hmm. me in front of company. My friends was over my house. I'm downstairs, we playing, we having a good time. My mom come downstairs, she said, hey, I told you to keep it down. You don't run this house, I do, okay? With that being said, that's it, you're done. Go to bed, mm. smack me. Sit me up to my room. Now, you know when you get smacked when you're a kid, you get hyped when you get by yourself. You gonna smack me, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> He's showing a video, he said, ask the female kids are around. I'm an emotional ass kid. 
pack a bag and everything. You know how many times I pack a bag with a toy? Pack a bag with one toy. I'm out. I'm sick of it. Me and He Man are out. Okay. My mom gave me permission to cuss one time. One time she gave me permission to cuss. I'm in school, I'm being bad. My teacher got mad that Kevin come here. Somebody comes to the front of the class, wrote a note, stick with a note to my chest. That makes sure your mother read the note. When I get home, my mom read the note. The note said, maybe if you showed your son some more attention at home, he wouldn't act like a fool in school. Right? My mom read the note and said, let me tell you something. Tell her, mind her damn business before I come down. Ooh. <laughs> so, okay, do you want me to say it like that? Do you want me to, you want me to say something? Okay. Tell her, mind her damn business before I come down there and I be back. I said, no, I heard what you said. I just want to make sure that you know that you're telling me to say the same thing. Kevin, if I tell you again, I'm going to snap Thank you. you. Okay, no, I got it. Okay, I got it. Okay, okay. okay. I got it. All right, I got it. All right. Keep in mind, it's a lot of pressure, all right? And then he goes into school. He does. I mean, there's more to that video, but the point I think I wanted to make with that video is, is that what King James is talking about? I mean, a lot of a lot of the way when we hear people when we heard people talking about that that third commandment that third word, basically they were telling you don't cuss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that was really the point. Uh, that doesn't appear to have been the point of the third word. We talked about that a little bit, and the way the the way the, the, the author the way the author talks about it is that what what God is really saying in this third word is don't trivialize my name. Yeah. And in all that rant. And, and the and the rants later on in that video uh, is they weren't trivializing God's name. Um, so we need we, we asked ourselves a little bit what we, what it means to trivialize my name, trivialize God's name, and so. One of the ways we trivialize God's name is by attaching God's name to things that aren't worthy of God. And we talked about this before. Yeah. Some examples. Uh, God, please help the Falcons win. Um, or the Steelers. Or the Steelers. <laughs> or, yes, the Steelers. The dirty birds. They need help, Paul. Huh? I said they need help. <laughs> Both of them do. And we trivialize the name. <laughs> or I swear to God, or you see this on on on, uh, on in in young people talk. OMG. Mm-hmm. Uh, another way you we talked about you might trivialize God's name is assuming that God hates people that we hate. Uh, mm-hmm. Muslims, Russians, Chinese, um, police, whatever. Um, People in the White House. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, or assuming that God supports the causes we support, like America, and abortion, Presbyterians. Um, we can also, <laughs> and, and Charlotte's talked about this before. Um, we trivialize God's name with platitudes. Uh, God's name is good. God is good all the time. It's God's will. Mm-hmm. God bless you. And we tend to use those phrases. We use those phrases. And there's nothing wrong with the phrase itself, I don't think. But we just, it's just something we say. And, and we don't even think about it. And not, not we. Yeah, it's kind of automatic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, just an automatic response. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the final way we kind of talked about that is ultimately we trivialize God's name when we live our lives or do church work 
to accomplish our goals rather than God's goals. Uh, so the question we need to ask ourselves in that, on that level is do we run the church the way we think God would want it run or the way we think it should run? And how do we know the difference? How do we know how God wants it run and how we want it, want it run? Mm. Yes, yes, you are. Hmm. So that's that's kind of the what that's kind of how we uh, that that was a real quick summary of how we talked about about the third word. The fourth word. Mm -hmm. uh, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Yeah. And like I said before, this is kind of a, a link between the command, the words that talk about how how we our relationship with God and our relationship with people. Um, and a lot of a lot of people believe, and we talked about this a little bit. A lot of people believe that Jesus sort of freed us from the Sabbath day. Um, if there's a couple of there's a couple of texts that, that people sort of uh, rely on when they do that. Uh, one is when he allows his uh, his disciples to, to go out and pick grain so they can eat. Uh, a violation of all the, the a violation of all the Sabbath laws. Um, and then there was another time when he healed the sick. When he healed healed somebody on the Sabbath, um, both of those and but if you pay attention, I think to his reaction to the Pharisees, he wasn't so much saying that we don't have to <coughs> excuse me that we don't have to observe the Sabbath. We don't have to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Um, we we have to do is remember um, remember that the Sabbath was made for people and people weren't made for the Sabbath. Another way to look, well, let's go back. And the idea of the Sabbath it, from Jewish law was that the Sabbath was a time for three things. For rest, for worship and for reevaluation re of your priorities, basically. And by the time of Jesus's time, the rabbis and scribes had come up with about two or three hundred different rules about how how you observe the Sabbath. And it got to the point where the observation was more bureaucratic than they were. They were, they were really observing laws rather than actually resting, worshiping, and reevaluating. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus was trying to remind them about. That in those instances where they caught him violating Sabbath laws, is that the Sabbath isn't about bureaucracy. It's about making sure that we are able to rest, worship, and reevaluate. So that is, I'm kind of running through this and haven't asked anybody to talk, but if somebody, this is this particular word always kind of it stumped, made me stumble a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody has some comments or some thoughts about what this particular word means for us today, that would be good. Or somebody has some uh, some theological training about it. <laughs> well, I know my mother took the Sabbath to be a time where you put all work aside. You had six days to work, and then you you observed the Sabbath, which meant that uh, you didn't cook. My mother prepared her meal for Sunday on Saturday. 
and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and you certainly didn't do anything that would be considered work where you would get paid for it. If you did something on Sunday, it better be. <laughs> Uh, um, so, you know, so they equated, my mother equated the Sabbath with simply not working. Hmm. Going to church, of course. <laughs> yeah, the pastor had to work. Um, well, if you remember, though, well, when we grew up and when most of us grew up, there wasn't really anything open on Sunday that you could have you could have paid money for. Except the theater every afternoon. No. Every yeah. Sunday afternoon. There was no theater in my town. <laughs> so we had all these yeah. new laws that closed everything on Sunday. And the we world was... Well, we went to the park. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drive through the park. <clears throat> Make sure your car's clean, stuff like that. You know, that wasn't good. <laughs> That's <what we> <laughs> That's what my generation did. <laughs> I mean, it was about, it, it, but that's about rest and relaxation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's different from what it's different from what you were focusing on the rest of the week. And that's really it's kind of time. the point, I think, is to give you time to say, if I've been so busy this week doing all of the crap I have to do this week, that I have lost my perspective of living a godly life. What I need, to, what I need to do with my relationship with God and my godly relationship with my community. Mm -hmm. This is, this is right. And you lose that when you treat the Sabbath bureaucratically with a whole bunch of rules that you can't, that you have to do. But you also lose if you, if Walmart's open and everything's open and you need, you need to do your shopping, you didn't get done on Saturday. <laughs> and the pandemic um, shutdown for those two weeks was a good example of that. Mm -hmm. People just didn't know what to do with themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. and God tried to give you like two weeks of Sabbath. Didn't work. Yeah. Then he tried six months. <laughs> <laughs> and see, like, what? Had to open up, everybody just lost their mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that's, you know, you, that's the probably the one, like I said, the one word that gets ignored by Christians more than any other. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the next word we talked about was don't kill each other. You shall not murder. Yeah. Uh-oh, I forgot one. Honor the life. Okay. Forgot, I don't honor think the life um, or, or as as King James says, honor your father and mother for your days may be long upon this earth. Um, and I think the main thing that we wanted to point out there was that understanding what it meant to honor somebody. Um, it, to uh, honor somebody, it didn't mean to blindly obey them, to do everything that they say, to do everything that they say, to uh, take whatever they had to dish out. Mm -hmm. Because the point, the point of the of the word was not to not to uh, subject children to abuse and have them take it just because God said so. Yeah, this so, is right. Mm -hmm. uh, the point was, I think, it sounded more to me like God was instructing people to. Honor the one, honor all all of the life givers, all the fathers and mothers. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way you honor them is to give them support, give them joy, give them forgiveness if that's what's necessary. Mm -hmm. But not subject yourself to abuse. Mm -hmm. um, 
what was unique about that particular word was that it included women. It required everybody to honor both men and women, which was not usual at the time. Mm -hmm. we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk about let talk about talk a little, little bit later about one where it was clear that it only it was yeah. was only going to be applied to women. But, uh, uh, so that was that was. Uh, that was pretty much, uh, I think, a, a summary of, 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 of the fifth word, uh, honor your parents, honor your life givers. And I think the other, I guess the other thing about it was they're talking about more than just your biological parents, but all, everybody that uh, provided, uh, that provided uh, life to you, whether it was spiritual life, emotional life, or physical life. <laughs> You mean like your kids moving back into the house? Yes. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, the next one we talked about was don't kill each other. You shall not murder. And that one gets a little tricky, I think. Um, because there's a whole gamut of ways that could be interpreted. Um, for example, Calvin talked about uh, injustice as murder. Uh, but you know that you so you have these questions in in at the time in Israel. Um, There was there was a death penalty for killing someone that that applied to both uh, intentional killing and accidental killing. And the only the only difference was that they would set up sanctuary cities. If you accidentally killed someone, you could go to and hide out, and they couldn't. <coughs> excuse me. Couldn't come in and kill you. Couldn't come in and, and kill you. Um, so, the, the, when it gets tricky, is uh, according to uh, according to most people, war is only justified if it's instructed by God. Uh, and even then, barbarity in war is never justified. Yeah. And then the question you ask is, what about abortion? What about the death penalty? What about self-defense? What about stand your ground? All those, all those things. All that goes. Um, and it is so lightweight. And when you first get your, remember when you first get your hair done? You can't move. I don't know. Uh, you need to ask everyone to put um, the phones on mute if they have conversations going on around them. Hey, could put my phone on mute because y'all, you can hear it here. Okay. Okay. Um, what was that? Six. Okay, we're off. We're up to the last one. Well, what I mean, so that's kind of the outline of when we did what we did. Um, what what other thoughts do y'all have about that? Because, I mean, I will start by saying that I came from a religious tradition that believed, that took this, there was, took this particular word very differently than most people do. Um, in our, in our religious tradition, going to war was wrong. Defending yourself violently was wrong. Um, there just there was no excuse for killing somebody or even using violence. Mm. And that's clearly not the Presbyterian theology. 
Um, and it's not, it's not obviously not, it's only, it's a real, it's a real my, my minority theology. Basically Mennonites and uh, Quakers and kind of churches associated with them. Mm. But what, uh, I mean, they have, other people have some thoughts about that? Have you ever mur murdered anybody? <laughs> no, but I had a question that when they wrote that Ten Commandments with that one in mind, you know, they didn't think about the wars and things and territory they would have to protect be before, uh, after that commandment was written? Well, I think... Uh... That, that's, that's the thing that I... They didn't think about it, and so... I guess they didn't think about it, and then that was written, and then now, the everything come along, the wars and this and that, even back in the biblical time, you had wars and and killing of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, do, how do you justify that? Well, I, one of the things I think that, I mean, somebody, and I, I don't know, I don't know where this came from, but one of the things in the article said that war was justified only if instructed by God. Yeah. And there were times in the Old Testament when they engaged in wars that were instructed by God. And there were times in the Old Testament when they engaged in war and they weren't instructed by God and they paid the price for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I don't think that I don't think that you can say that God didn't think about that when he wrote this. Um, but I, I think that God probably relied on his prophets to, to do the teachings that were necessary to follow up on it. Yes. Okay. Um, Charlotte, you can weigh in on that too, but that seems to me, It's, in, it's imperative to realize that God sets so many parameters for us to work in. But you also have to look at the character of God because God actually does kill people. And he says it. And uh, it's for the benefit sometimes of the nation of Israel. And sometimes it's for the benefit of righteousness because the people are just so horrible. Um, so when you you're getting into you know the Sabbath and murder and murder is you have to look at this three dimensional murder deals with a, an intent that's set in one's heart that entered the mind that set went about planning mm -hmm. an accidental killing maybe that you know you know people get crazy and boom you shot someone and you kill someone and then that's where we get the manslaughters many of the laws that we have now are do come directly from uh, some of the hebrew laws uh, so when you parse out the laws all of those things are in there if you accidentally kill a woman and she's pregnant they give you a recipe for that of what to do and can you atone for it and like paul said you had the um the scapegoat type of um you know, neighborhoods that you could run to for safety, but you could never leave that neighborhood. Well, then the family of the person you killed could then kill you. Yeah. So th there's so much there, and human nature um, dictates how we see this. And it's very, it is very communal, and it varies from community to community. Because Paul's saying, you know, we, you know, and the way I grew up, I was taught that you there are times you have to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all were. So I would not have known what to yeah. do if I had stopped <laughs> Paul and I, and he didn't hit me back. This is right. This I probably would have just hit him in the other eye. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> he was a scorer. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But the yeah. particular thing when you're talking about the commandments, you have to braid in all the, the 10 enunciations or the enumerations that came forth from the Most High God. Um, 
shifted from the first time they were given because we had to come to an understanding of what it is for us to be the light in the world. If you further examine all the things that Jesus started saying, they all fit neatly into these commandments. But it's about your spiritual, it's not just the physical life, it's the 3D realm that we live in. We live in a physical, we live in this realm, we, we're still, you know, spirit. So mm -hmm. yes, you always right. That's why you yes, you can say, well, if you've done it in your heart, then you've already done it. Mm -hmm. you know, this is right. So sometimes people murder others by killing their spirit. That mm -hmm. was a happy little girl. What happened? Something just, mm -hmm. you know, crushed her spirit. Well, mm -hmm. no one knew that she was being molested. So there are more more ways to murder than just to you know kill the body you can mm -hmm. murder someone's mind there are sometimes mm -hmm. intentionality there people doing things you know as you're developing and things like that that happens in christianity all the time our minds mm -hmm. get warped because people are intentional about shaping our consciousness in a way that kills who we really are before God. And we're not allowed to be uniquely and authentic before our God. So murder is, for me, as wide and vast as far as being one of the enumerations that came forth to Moses. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Thank, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. okay. And the last one we did was thou shalt not commit adultery and since we haven't since i haven't used up my hour yet i'm going to play another video although mostly it's going to be um, you know you have to edit out the video with the profanity when you send it to me i won't be able to put it on facebook okay <laughs> <laughs> you just take that um You'll just take Kevin Hart out. Okay. Actually, what I could do is stop recording during this while I share. Hold on just a minute. Poor thing died. Okay. <laughs> I love Jimmy. I know. I love talking to this guy. It is so fun. What's an interesting, you know, of course, that when this was, when this word was given, the only people that were, uh, that were punished for polygamy in general were the women, right? Yeah. 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 And that went through the centuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, what, what it did recognize, though, was that even though men were polygamous, they had to stick within their fa the family they had created by the polygamy, too. Because uh, the family unit at that point was crucial to the economic of, of a particular family and somebody that violated I, I'm not getting this out right but somebody that it was sticking with the family not not committing adultery not going outside the family whether it's outside the polygamous family or the or the monogamous family <coughs> was a matter of honor for the family was and if you lost honor in that society then you lost your ec your economics as well um so it was this had a, a lot to do with making sure that the family stayed the family stayed uh, united uh, but Right, right now, it's pretty, I mean, right now, it's not all that unclear what it means. Just don't do it. Yeah. Um, if you look well, you at also have the Jewish numbers. They were wanting to increase the number of people that 
you know, they had. It was about growing the community. So that's why you have some of the redactors literally came in and did some work. Ezra was the one who had them separate from their foreign wives. And the response to that was the Book of Ruth. Mm -hmm. Which shows the Moab people being, you know, married to Jewish people for the benefit and of the Jewish people. So that the, some of the Jewish people um, were very wounded, and, but they understood what the priest and the prophets were trying to do. They were trying to keep them strong in numbers because when they started out, they, they were a mixed group. So they tried to make sure that group came together and was solid as far as the bloodline. And that's imperative. The bloodline is imperative because God has said, these are the people the Messiah will come from. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was, uh, in my studies, that was some of the reasoning giving for, you know, you know, you can go back to Tamar and, you know, her husband died and then she had to be married to other brothers. It was about raising up ch Jewish children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if God's purpose is for us to live in community, think of all the ways that adultery can totally devastate a community at different levels. Right? I mean, think of, think of uh, individual relationships. Think of church. How many of you have been in a church where people were caught engaging in adultery, you know, and you, you uh huh, and, and everybody wants you to, to do what? Oh, yes. Right. Uh, they, they want you to take sides, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, that tears away at this concept of community. Um, think of all the um, politicians whose lives have been ruined because of adultery, you know, it's, so if we're going to live in community, we have to um, not commit it. Yeah. Now, how, how many of you have actually committed it? Raise your hand. <laughs> Tell the truth, y'all, come on. Tell the truth. Uh, I know I have. <laughs> I know I have. They ain't gonna lie about it. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, we also, there's so much that you have to take into account. You have to take into account the relational dynamics, abuse, mental abuse. There's so much that has to be taken into place. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah. so because, like I said, then you're looking at someone you know, maybe it murdered someone's spirit or, the, you know, wounded their psyche, which is, you know, that's life too. Your psychological way of being is a type of life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's why some things, why they appear cut and dry, they are not. And I have been one in church to argue. Um, there was a young lady, we were all with the praise team and the drummer and everyone who knew they were having a relationship. The man was married, mm -hmm. she was not. But the day we found out, we only saw her. So you yeah. know I asked him, yeah. where's the man? Mm -hmm. Where is the man? And where is his wife? Let's bring his wife in to let her beat the snot out of him. You know, so, you know, people were like, Charlotte, you're not helping. Yes, I am because you're in, I mean, they totally insulted I felt so bad for this young lady. Mm -hmm. She was humiliated before the community. Mm -hmm. So now many times what happens when your truth is given to the community, you while they may act as if well, you, it's been forgiven, everyone still remembers your truth. Mm -hmm. So that, there's, a, there's just layers upon layers of things there when you're dealing with adultery and i always go back to what yes was saying <laughs> most people are doing it in their heart anyway yes yes like jimmy carter 
Huh? Jimmy Carter admitted that he lusted after uh, women in his heart. So he was he was an adulterer. He admitted it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, what I'd like to do is, unless other people have some comments, I'd like to close us out with a group with prayer. And then I'd kind of like to, if you all stay on for a minute and just give some feedback of how this worked. Not so much the content, but how the Zoom worked and, and how the videos played for you. Mm, okay, I'll text you. Okay, so um, let's uh, bow our heads. Paul. Yeah. Before you get started with this prayer, please pray for those people down in Louisiana and with that oh. storm heading here. Because okay. it's going right into the past where Sith is and Taylor are living. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was that's what I was kind of worried about because they yeah. said that, that storm surge could come in over thirty miles inland. This is right. Mm -hmm. And the waves are gonna be so high. But she's she's moving toward they closed all the roads, she told me. And then she's going to take Highway 55, which will take her up to uh, up to Meridian, Miss uh, to uh, yeah. I'm sorry, to uh, Meridian, uh, Mississippi. Mississippi. Meridian, Mississippi. So she can get to Highway 20, and she says it's not too bad. She can come on home, but it's not that far she can go. It's to uh, Meridian, Mississippi. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, uh, Miss Lena has family there too, and she said that they drove to um, Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have my cousin that lives there in uh, there at Fort Polk. They left and they're going to Austin, Texas too, San Antonio. Yeah. Okay. So just pray for those people and, and on the golf. So they said this is going to be worse than Katrina. Mm. Yeah, it's category four. Yeah, yeah. Oh, got ugly. Yeah. Okay. Um, Linda, you want to close us with prayer? Okay. Gracious God, now we thank you for, you for this time of sharing and just seeing each other after such a long period of time. Father, we thank you for your word and for the understanding and the gift of teaching that Paul and Charlotte brought to this class tonight. Father, we thank you that you have continued to keep us spiritually strong when we have been physically weak at times. And then, Father, we ask that not just us, but that you will also remember all those people in the line of, of Laura, Father, we know that you have control over everything, yes. and everything happens for a reason, yes. and there's a season for everything. We just ask that you will give peace, comfort, and love to all that are in the past, and that you will shelter those that need to be sheltered. In your holy name, we do pray. Amen. 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 Okay, I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Uh, first of all, did you have any trouble logging in? No, we didn't. No. Okay. And I, my piece, well, I didn't. I didn't uh, charge up my tablet. So, but I, I came on the phone. But hopefully, I'll be ready for the tablet. Okay. Was it? Was there any problem coming in on the phone? Oh no. 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 Nope. I'm on my phone as well. well Me too. I'm <clears throat> yeah, well, you, you all use smartphones, but she actually called dialed in. Oh. I didn't know which number to call. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I, oh, I dialed in from my, from my house phone. Yeah, I didn't use my cell phone. Yeah. Okay, if if you just clicked on the link, it would have brought you right on in from your cell phone. That right. Patty, that mm -hmm. called in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I finally figured that out. I went to the Zoom. Uh, thing that they put on my phone for me to do my uh, meetings with with Presbyterian. 
So I got in that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And but this has been better than any of the meetings that I've been on the phone with. You think it's worth trying a Sunday morning service on it? Oh, I would love to. Yeah, yeah that would be great. That would be really great. Mm-hmm. I really yeah. kind of miss y'all on Sunday morning because I only get a chance to see it on the <laughs> I do uh, too. I do too. On, on the, uh, yeah, I, wa- I see it on the, uh, what you call it, but it always has to be like Wednesday or Thursday before I can get the Sunday program. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it, okay, it's well, not Facebook, the other, the other program. I can't think of it right now. Well, if you just make sure that, give us a little, um, I'm going to, tr- we'll try, I mean, I'll, we'll talk about it, Charlotte, but, and maybe with Kenny, but if we can, we may be able to do it and, and be able to put up some of the stuff we do during a regular service, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sort of follow the bulletin and stuff like that. We'll see. The first one might be a little clumsy, but we'll we'll do it. Our- I, we'll I think we'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think we'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I think if it goes as well as this has gone tonight, it'll be me. great. Uh huh. No, we have any problems. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thanks for participating.